Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here's a man after my own heart. <laughs> and, and he's a winemaker to boot. Love this. This from the Associated Press. At 57, winemaker Bill Gulvin has never been married and has no such plans in the works. He's not a mama's boy or a playboy. Instead, the Columbia, Pennsylvania resident calls himself a realist for remaining single. Gulvin says there aren't many really compelling reasons to get married anymore. Yeah, baby. Right, Bill. Says here, while single women have seemingly banded together to change their image in the popular culture, there's been no such battle cry for men who have a whole different set of stereotypes to fight. Unmarried men are called confirmed bachelors or James Bond, Bond, James Bond style playboys or cranky old men or gay. None of this is helped by the fact that married men live longer or by the common notion, common notion, that men need a woman's touch to perform household tasks like cooking, decorating, or doing their laundry. But... Some proud single men say they're better off alone. Now, keep in mind, this guy does not live in our listing area. Maybe he's heard our show online. I don't know, but he came to some of the same conclusions I have. Listen to this. This is Bill Gulvin, the winemaker, age 57, Columbia, Pennsylvania. He said, a man is a sperm bank, a meal ticket, a handyman, and an early retirement plan. He says, for those reasons and others, he has decided to go through life without committing to one romantic relationship. Says here, both men and women are staying single longer as the median marriage age rises. In 2006, 33% of men in their early 30s had never been married, compared to 29% of women is according to the U.S. Census figures. Experts say society still favors married men over their single counterparts, however. The most common complaints come from the workplace, where many say they are discriminated against. Sherry Langbert, founder of a new website, which I'm not going to promote, which she calls an online community for happy singles, says... Especially as you approach your mid-30s and 40s, and all your colleagues around you are married, there's a lot of unsaid words that go on and feelings of inadequacy at work. Can I tell you something? Why would I feel inadequate at work? I make big money. Here I am in the radio business with huge ratings in the biggest revenue radio market in the world. Why would I feel inadequate? I'm a big goddamn star. Make a lot of money. Why would I feel inadequate? Are you kidding me? And I'm unmarried. So that cash ole is not going to buy Hello Kitty purses. It's not going to buy dog carriers. It's not going to buy little kitty cats. It's not going to buy tchotchkes that will be forgotten in a week or so. Just took my money and spent it on a big new house. That's the money I saved by not having some chick in my way. says here the speculation in the office about unmarried guys includes what his sexual preferences are and
and they claim here a difficulty in making friends with heterosexual co-workers because colleagues might question his motives. Gary, did you ever think I was gay when I <laughs> invited you over to watch the ball game? Did you think I wanted gay sex? Art, did you think I was going to grab your ass when you came over my house? Come on. I didn't even ask if you were hoping for that. I'm just saying, were you expecting that? Where, where is all of this going on? On what planet? Hey, guys, big game this Sunday. Want to come over? What are you, gay? You're not married. Where's the little lady? <laughs> the woman who owns this website is clearly delusional, in my opinion. Says here, single men often say they're asked to work on holidays. That's true. Put in longer hours or travel more for business. By the way, boys, here's all you have to say. No. How about it? Have a little spine. Have a little backbone. See, it's when you have no spine that I think you're gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But simply being unmarried doesn't make me think you're gay. Says here, employers often assume that without a spouse, unwed workers have extra time to spare, says Nikki Grist, executive director of the Alternatives to Magic Marriage Project. Alternatives to Magic. Yeah. The Alternatives to Marriage Project. Nikki Grist says that organization is for people who choose not to marry or cannot legally marry. All right. I guess that means they've got gay members. Can I say gay and members in the same? I'm just curious. I want to get in trouble. It says here, particularly in the powerful worlds of business and politics, it's often all about appearances and presenting oneself as a stable man with a solid foundation, Grist said. Part of that expectation probably still stems from the idea that in order to completely fulfill your role as a leader in this business or policy setting, you need the support of a family and, most often, a wife. Can I just say this? I, I think this is very dated information. I have told you, and I will point it out again, people talk about settling down. Don't you need to settle down? You need to settle down. How settled down can I be? I own two homes, maintain both of them. I'm financially responsible. I've got a FICO score of over 800. I show up to work on time every day. Doesn't matter who I'm banging. I still show up for work on time every day. Get the job done. Hit it out of the park every day. I mean, what, because I'm unmarried, somehow I've got to be less responsible or less likely to come in and work hard, uh, be uh, you know, somehow volatile or dangerous or not reliable. I don't get it. You know, you can hire out for all of that. You know, when I, I'll have a party, I don't need a wife, I'll hire a party planner. If I have a real party, like Memorial Day, I'm going to have a party at the new spread up north. I don't even live up north, okay? I own a house there, and I'm there occasionally, starting effective almost immediately. If I'm going to have a party, I'm going to hire a party planner, give that person the key to my house, and when I get there, it will be all set up for a Memorial Day party. I will pay them a fee, and it will probably be a substantial fee. Maybe it'll be $500. Compare that to the cost of having a bitch. Someone whose every bill you have to pay. That $500 is nothing compared to having to buy handbags, shoes, dresses, skirts, underwear, bras, pantyhose, 
tchotchkes, jewelry, making payments on her car, her student loan, her visa bill, $500 is nothing. And don't these idiots at the office understand that somebody like me could go out and hire for help? I could hire out for help. I hire party planners, housekeepers, bartenders to work parties. Absolutely. If I need help packing, I get help packing. If I'm going to travel someplace, I take my laundry to the dry cleaners a lot cheaper than paying for a wife or a girlfriend. Why would anyone assume that I am not somehow stable and responsible and settled down? This is stupid. Says here, of course, not all unattached men want to stay that way. The popular online dating site eHarmony says it had trouble attracting men when it first launched in 2000. Well, you know why that is? Because these are women who aren't going give to give it up. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimension of underwear, and I want to pull it off. That's it. No wonder guys didn't want to sign up. By the way, if you've ever looked at eHarmony or gotten a clue from the commercials, where those are probably the most attractive women on the website, there's more than a hint of chunk on the eHarmony website. Because these are women who listen to Christian talk radio or eHarmony that runs infomercials. And that Dr. Neil Clark Warren who does the commercials, that guy's a minister. E-harmony is like quasi-religious. If you don't believe in God, you can't get on there. If you want to get laid, you can't get on there. Now, oh, they can't get men to sign up. I'm shocked. That was in the beginning, anyway. They claim that's changing now. Somebody named J. Galen Buckwalter. What is he, an elder in the church? Well, he's the vice president of research and development for eHarmony.com. He says, it seems like there's been a real social shift among men. That being committed does seem to be cool these days. What would eHarmony.com know about what's cool these days? Yeah, you know what's really cool? Monogamy. It's so hip to be monogamous these days. It's the in thing among the young folks. Yes, and chastity, too. Very cool. This guy claims that there's growing emphasis in our culture on the value of fatherhood and long-term relationships. Well, eHarmony better hope so, or they're going out of business. Says here in the article, but coupledom isn't for everybody. Remember the guy we were talking about, the winemaker, Bill Gulvin? He says he goes out with women. He has many friends. He has a job he enjoys and a loyal cat. Well, now I think he is gay. A loyal cat waiting for him at home at the end of the day. He says he has no interest in having children and doesn't want to fall in love. He says, I don't like the feeling. I find it to be pretty neurotic and dysfunctional. All you have to do is listen to country western love songs if you want to hear about dysfunctional codependent love relationships. Now, except for the cat part, you got to admit this guy makes a lot of sense, right? Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You can have an opinion. I just don't want to know what it is. Why is that? Because I just want you to put your left leg at the 12 and your right leg at the 3. Oh, 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 that is so irritating to hear you say that. It's the Tom Likes Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas sh- 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 Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about a piece that I received about unmarried guys. And why many men are happy to stay unmarried. What do you think about this? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Gabriel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hello, Tom. Yeah. Well, you know, just pretty much just want to let you know, man. I mean, my family, you know, I'm Hispanic. My family gave me a hard time, you know, because I told them that I wasn't planning on having kids or getting married. 
You know, and the funny thing about that is my brother, who was probably giving me the hardest time, right now is completely fed up with his wife, wants to leave her. You know, he's kind of trying to understand, starting to understand what I was telling him about that. Wow. Did he come back to you and say, you know what, you, you might be right? Yeah, because, I mean, his wife, she's just a total bitch. You know, there's no question about that. And I mean, and I, and even when he was talking about having children, and I told him that I wasn't planning on that, he started giving that. Oh, well, just think about when you're, you know, feeling proud of the, all the great things the kid has got to bring to your life. It's like, hey, dude, I got nephews and nieces to do that for me. That's I right. I had children for more than two days, man. That's right. So, yeah, is yeah, it really? Man. Is it really worth the cost? Not at all. I mean, right now I'm completely focusing on you know doing my career, and I don't have to worry about taking care of any kids, taking care of any woman, and I'm not planning to do it ever. You know, because I mean it's this is my life, and I and I'm not making money to enjoy it for myself. Yeah, and why not? Yeah. Hey, Tom, can you take me out of Kobe Bryant style? You know I can, Gabriel. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Gabriel makes a lot of sense there. Oh, think of all the wonderful things kids bring into your life. Think of the expenses kids bring into your life. The lack of mobility kids bring into your life. The time kids take away from your life. Um, I, I love kids, and um, I love spending time with kids. I really do. Don't think I hate kids. I, I have a seven-year-old nephew. I'm going to New York to see him next weekend. Going to go to a couple of hockey games with him in New York. He's the best. I can't wait to see him. But guess what? When I go to the hockey game, his dad, my brother, will also be there. And when he needs to go to the men's room, guess what? My brother will have to do that. And when he wants to go to the souvenir stand and get a $40 hat or a $75 shirt, Dad will be there to make all the purchases. I just get to be Uncle Tom. And then when I'm done going to the hockey games, he will hug me and tell me he loves me and tells me he's going to miss me very much, and I'm going to miss him too. And then... It's my brother's job to make sure he gets to school on time and make sure he does his homework and deal with him if he ever acts up in school. That's somebody else's problem. There's no doubt my nephew has added things to my life. Guaranteed. I love him to death. I think it's great. Kids are so many great things about kids. And my nephew, if you haven't heard me talk about him before, He's like me when I was seven years old. It's like having a conversation with me as a boy. So I just love spending time with him. I love playing video games with him. I love talking to him. I love seeing how he thinks. It's all great. But why do I want the, the, the expense and the responsibility of having to take care of a little human being when I can get all of the benefits and none of the responsibilities? Think about it. Isn't that just logical? Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, I just want to tell you why I don't get married is uh, I already got a best friend. She listens, uh, does what I say, doesn't talk back, doesn't use the restroom. She's man's best friend, a dog. Oh, and well, she is a bitch. Yeah, she's a bitch. <laughs> I don't need another one around. You've already got one, bitch. Yeah. That's plenty. She sleeps in the garage and everything. <laughs> He's horse meat? Just horse meat, exactly. Just horse meat, 29 cents a can. The girls ask, uh, how come I love my dog so much? Because you're just a sperm bank. She's my best friend. Right. Exactly. By the way, have you noticed with your best friend at home, everything you say is entertaining? Exactly. Everything you do is exciting? Her day is built around what time you get home. Exactly. When you get there, she follows you with anticipation. What are we doing next? What are we doing next? What are we doing next? Doesn't talk back either. Doesn't talk back. 
likes all the shows on TV that you like. Exactly. You can sit together with her, and she will uh, just enjoy being with you. Yep. I mean, let's be realistic. Why would you want to have a human bitch when you can have a canine bitch? Exactly. I can. Uh, when I put the girls out in the garage in the morning, they just leave. Right. I, and by the way, with, with your bitch, you don't have to give her cab fare. Exactly. Put, put a little food in her bowl and uh, water, too. <laughs> That's right. Although I have done that with the, uh, the human uh, kind. I have done that. <laughs> put a little food in the bowl, a little water. <laughs> hey, so, but you can't chain them out in the yard either, though. Oh, yes, you can. Actually, yeah. yes. You can do that. I'm going to have to try that one. <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend it, but you can do it. <laughs> anyway, Ryan, thank you. All right, thanks, Tom. Hey, can you take me out a uh, Kobe style with a uh, uh, Snoop Dogg at the end? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Bitch. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, L T, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, uh, just got to tell you, I uh, love the show, man. I'm Thank a new you. Listener. New listener, I've been hearing about you for years. I do stand up, and all my comedian friends are like, you got to listen to Likas, and I just got turned on to, it, and I haven't been able to turn you off every day for a month now. Love that. So, love the show. I got to tell you though, um, it's so funny because I just turned thirty nine this January, and. For about the past six or seven years, all my friends were always like, when are you going to settle down? When are you going to uh, get married? And, you know, I would get on them because they got married and they told me about how fantastic it was and they got kids and that's the joy of their life. And then it just one day it kind of turned. And then all of a sudden now I'm the single guy and they, they get so bitter and jealous. I can't even discuss like if I go on a casual date or the fact that I have all my free time or I don't have somebody nagging at me or bitching at me. I could do whatever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want. And that has become the most valuable thing in my life. My, my, my freedom to do whatever I want is so valuable that it just drives them crazy. And they're miserable, every single one of them. Even my, my, my girlfriends and my guy friends call me and commiserate about their exes or their people that they're with or whoever it is. So for me, the benefit, the best thing in my life is my, is my freedom. Yeah, I think it's important. I think a lot of people uh, are so afraid of being alone, they have no idea how valuable that is. It, it, definitely there's something to it. I mean... Yeah, it's nice to have somebody there, but to be in a codependent relationship where you can't go out or you can't go to a movie or who are you talking to or who is that or what happened at work and nag, 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 you know, I don't have that. And it's a beautiful thing. It's very liberating to live life that way. I totally agree, LT. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Hi, boys. We started off this hour talking about an article that appeared in the uh, Associated Press. And it's about uh, guys increasingly not wanting to get married. Waiting until later or later, or in some cases, just blowing it off. Vic on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Vic. Uh, Tom, first of all, let me say it's an honor to finally talk to you. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. And uh, I love your show. I mean, my whole family listens to your show, including both my parents and my older brothers. And it's uh, it's funny because every time I'm with the girl and my mom hears about it, she goes, you don't know these women. I listen to Tom Likas. Be careful. I know how these women are. I'm like, Mom, I listen to Tom Likas, too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm protecting the entire family. The whole family. The whole and all my friends. And Tom, I'm listening to you. I don't want to get married anymore too, man. I really don't. 
I got two older brothers. Let them get married. Let them have kids. Let them take the plunge for me, man. I'll be a great uncle. I don't need to be a father. And, um, I mean, everything you say, you preach. And we listen. We men listen. I was in a relationship, which is stupid because I'm 19. And uh, after I got out of it, I did all the like it's 101 things. I followed your rules. Tom, you know how many girls I got? Tell me. Listening to you? Tell me. Tom, I can't even count how many girls I got from listening to you. I lost track. And I, I even love them from time to time. I forget their names. Perfect. And it's all because of you. And you're doing the right thing. Men, every guy needs to listen to your show. They need to listen to what they say, what you say. And they need to understand it. I mean, some guys are dumb. They take it the wrong way. Not everyone can listen to Tom Likas. you got to be smart. And even girls, man. i got girls who know they listen to you. And they're smart girls. And they listen to you and they agree with what you say. So you're doing... You're like a... You're like a prophet, man. I'm doing God the Lord's you, work. You're doing the Lord's work. God sent you to do what you're doing. Right. And God bless you, Tom. Just keep doing what you're doing and we'll keep listening and... I don't know what to say. It's an honor. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Sure it was. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Well, I just wanted to tell you, Tom, about four months ago, I got out of a six-year-long relationship with a girl I thought was going to be, you know, was going to be everything. But you know what? I wised up. I figured out that wasn't really what I wanted. I got back out on my own, moved back from the Tahoe area back down to where I'm at in Huntington Beach, and I'm just loving life. There couldn't be anything better than not having a girlfriend. It's the or best. Or a wife or anything else. I go, I get up when I want to. I go snowboarding when I want to. I don't have to ask permission or wait for anything. It's just awesome. <laughs> I think it's the best, and uh, especially at 30 years old, there is no reason to have any obligation to anybody. No, and it, and that's when you really feel it too. Oh, I know. There's all these things you can do, and you've got a, and you've got somebody there checking your marks all the time. It's no fun. Let's leave uh, getting married to poor guys, and let's leave uh, having children to the dumb and the poor. Oh yeah, I got I got uh, three nephews that I that I'm trying to teach everything I know to right now, and a niece, and that's about all I need. One. One afternoon with them is enough to remember why I don't have them. That's all it takes. That's it. It's the best birth control in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Tom. Dad, can you blow me up with a bong rip, please? You know I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kyrie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Kyrie. This is such a delicious topic. You know, I, too, am sick. I like going to my buddy's house and watching them just have to suffer with their sometimes terrible children. You know, the baby's mom or the, the daughters, or they're just crying out of control. Hey, Uncle Kyrie. Can we play with you? No, nah, it's okay. I like, my house is baby-proof, child-proof. I have broken glass everywhere. I don't care. You know, I do as I do. And uh, my You know how my house is child-proofed? I've got four floors with Oof. stairs. Oof. I, my my house was built in 1925. It's got windows that come down practically to the ground. If, if, if I put new windows in today, they'd have to be up to code, and I'd have to move them higher. A kid could lean out the window and fall out. Uh, and I, you know, I'd hate you, to see that happen. No suing on your hands, Tom. You're too smart for that. Come That's on. right. But again, man, like I said, I don't have uh, too much ammo for this topic, but I maintain my singleness, keep banging chicks every day. You know, when I can, if I don't want them, I just go home and just sit in front of the boob tube and play some PlayStation for all I care. Nobody bothers me. And... Think the single life's the way to be if you don't have your head on straight. And if you do got your head on straight, manage your money, do your thing, and uh, keep looking toward the stars. Sounds good to me, Kyrie. Hey, can I go? Can you blow me up? Yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Mark on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. I had a little. Uh, 
scenario here for me. It's a scenario for like a story, man. Um, you were reading that the article on um, on the guy, what, the wine guy or whatever. He's a winemaker. Uh, yeah, the winemaker. And as you were reading that, uh, there's a few points throughout that uh, article that you know hit a nerve. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, my whole goal is becoming a police officer. And um, when I mention in my interviews that, or the subject comes that I'm, you know, not hitched. I'm not going to say single because I know how you say that. You know, that doesn't apply. It's unmarried. Yeah. Um, they always look down on me on that. I notice that they make a face, they sigh, they take a deep breath. They, they sometimes they, you know, they drill me a little bit more with more questions in regards to the subject. And, you know, I've, I've asked uh, other friends that I have in the law enforcement, um, like, a lot of field of, of work, and they say that, you know, being married shows more stability, it shows more responsibility, shows more um, uh, leadership. And I'm thinking, dude, I got everything straight. You know, I got my education, I got a good job, I'm good at my job, I, good, I got a good work ethic. Um, I, I, why, why is that, Doc, huh? Why is it that they, they, they look at people that are not hitched? They cause misery people. loves company. They are jealous of the freedom you have, and they want everybody else to be as miserable as they are. But why are jobs is that important? I mean, I don't understand why is it that, that they think, oh, okay, you know, a married person is more responsible, is more, is, is more of a leader. And if I'm as much as leader as anybody that's married or unmarried. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm thinking, why is it that they always uh, front up? I mean, I do have a, uh, a kid. You know what I mean? I have a child um, because, uh, you know, I'm Hispanic and we do move towards that. You know, my mom was pushing me kind of like, hey, you know, you got to do this. You got to get married. Have but you don't have to do that. You know, here's the thing about whether you're Hispanic or not. You don't live in the old country. You, you're an American. Well, I understand that, yes. Uh, but see, so you don't have to have kids. You don't have to do what they did in your grandparents' home country. Well, now I realize that. Now I realize that because I, I had to go through that. And, and luckily, I'm pretty young still, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm kind of staying away from that. And I already told her. I already told her, you know, I'm sorry you raised me a certain way, but unfortunately, you'll never see me walk that aisle. You know, I'll never, you'll never, that'll be one thing I'll never fulfill for you because I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm just right now, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on my responsibilities that I have, the, my career, um, and that's all I want right now. You know and I mean? you're living with the laws of the state, in your case, of the state of California, where if you get divorced, a man gets screwed. Oh, tell me about it. I already went for, uh, to court for the, the, the monetary situation. Right. Um, and I, I, I won. I beat the case. You know what I mean? Because to me it was important not so much the monetary uh, situation, but it was me not looking like a deadbeat. That's what I went, you know, to contest. And, I mean, I got all those good things on, on me, and they still kind of look down on me sometimes. I mean, I notice. They don't tell me straight out, but I do notice that they kind of, you know, frown at the fact that, you know, I'm not hitched. And I've always wondered, what, I mean, why are they so biased about that, about, you know, people that are, you know, mid-20s or and above, and they, they haven't, you know, tied the knot yet. I mean, what's so important about tying the knot? Well, I, I just, I, uh, in the case of people who have children, you know, as I say, I, I do believe there are benefits to children if the parents are married, but I don't believe there's a benefit to men well, that, to that, get married. That, uh, I agree on. I mean, that I agree on. But even then, I mean, you can... But I think if you say people are looking down on you, and I i don't think they should, but those who do, that's probably why. Because they believe the child would be better off with two parents. Well, I, yeah, I mean, that that I understand. But when it comes to getting like uh, like a, a job in, in law enforcement, I mean, it doesn't show any lack of responsibility. I mean, obviously, I beat the case, so it, it proves that I'm... Well, and that that's discrimination. They, uh, yeah, that, that would be inviting a huge lawsuit. Uh, well, it, yeah, I mean, like I said, they don't straight out come and tell me. You know, they, right. but I can tell that they make a face, they frown, they sigh, right. they, they take a deep breath and all that. Hey, one other thing that I want to tell you, Tom, um, women say all the time that, you know, you influence guys. You know, uh, that you give them ideas, that you change them, they complain, they call and start, you know, bitching at you, saying that you, you changed their boyfriend or their husband or whatever. Right. Uh, in certain occasions, that might be the case, but I just want to put this out there. Um, you're just a guy that came out and, and put it, guy spots out in the open. You know, when I first started listening to you, it wasn't so much that you, you shine a light on new things, which you did, and a lot of things you did, but your appeal was that, I, like, hey, this guy thinks what I'm thinking. You know, like he says what I want to say, or I'm not the only guy that thinks that way. Because a lot of people, when you, you know, they, everybody wants to be politically correct when it comes to relationships. They're saying, oh, you know, you're bitter, or you haven't had luck with women, or whatever the case may be. But I'm thinking, like, the more and more I speak about it, the more uh, guys agree on everything that you got to say. 
Very good so, point, Mark. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Jason. I mean, uh, Tom, how you doing? Great. Hey, uh, this is my first time caller, a long time listener. I think the uh, answer to why they see uh, married people is more, you know, more stable or whatever is because to be married, it, it's almost like having an anchor. And if you're going to be a police officer and you're surrounded by opportunities to commit crimes as well as stop crime, they see that as an opportunity to keep you. You're less likely to want to mess up your whole family if you're uh, if you're married. You know what I mean? Well, well, you know, we love the police, and a lot of officers are listeners. But because I know a lot of police officers, I also know how much uh, infidelity exists around the police departments of America. Oh, totally. So if if that's true, why would guys engage in infidelity? Well, we all know why guys engage in infidelity. But, but then the point know. is that, that would also mess up your family. So it, oh, definitely. It, it's certainly uh, ridiculous to assume that a man who is married is somehow more responsible or less likely to screw things up. Oh, I agree, but I'm just saying in terms of the whole, like, police, that guy who was applying for the police department or whatever, they look at married men as kind of like anchored down. They're they're not going to... Right, but they're wrong to look at them that way, is, is the point I'm trying to make. Peter on the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. Good. Um, I generally agree with you uh, regarding most of what you say about relationships, but in my situation, I think there might be... Um, one good reason for me to have a girlfriend that's a little bit more serious. Everyone thinks that. Go ahead. Um, well, I recently moved out here to Los Angeles, and, you know, I'm still in the process of making friends, meeting new girls. And a few days ago, I got this amazing deal, you know, all-inclusive to go to Mexico. And a lot of the girls, you know, that I just went out with, you know, and had sex with and then not called, you know, they don't exactly feel comfortable going to Mexico, you know, with a complete stranger. So right. I was thinking, you know, maybe if I had a more serious girlfriend, you know, it, to do this fun Oh, stop. Trip. Stop right there. What if you went to Mexico and met women in Mexico? Did you ever think of that? Oh, I did. I just haven't really gone on a trip by myself before. Well, step it up, Peter. One of the reasons to go to Mexico is to meet chicks. That's true. So I should just say, you know, I'll just... Why would you take myself. sand to the beach? Of course. That's Do you know true. how many women go to the go go to places like Cabo? Where are you going in in Mexico? Cancun, uh, Cabo, uh, where? Uh, Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. I've been there many times. I love it. Do you know how many women are there who have boyfriends back home? They go on like girls' weekends or uh, you know girls' vacations. And what oh, go I'm, and what goes on the road stays on the road. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, you could go down there and tap that. That's true, Tom. Why in the world would you want to bring a girl with you? Oh, I don't know. You know, uh, just, uh, time, you know, just to have... Time to grow up, Peter. Thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.